Okay, it's Mr. Block. So now we're going to make some fish cakes. So what we need, the main ingredients are fish. And here I've got some smoked haddock and some bassa. Uh, the most well-known fish cakes will probably be either salmon or cod or a mixture. Um, bassa is a bit low cod, but it's a bit cheaper. Smoked haddock, give it a bit of smoky flavour. And mashed potato. And I'm going to show you a trick here. With these potatoes, I've already baked them. So it's a real easy way to do it. It's a lot easier. So first thing I'm going to skin these. You see this is haddock. So we hold it here, hold it on the corner, and then we wiggle it like this, quite easy, and then we just take the skin off like so, and we don't leave much um, fish on, on the skin. Show you that again, get the little bit, go in the corner, reasonably simple to do. And that one breaks, so sometimes it breaks, but it doesn't normally do that. Hold it again. You can, if you can't grab it, put some salt on your hands and you can hold it as you can see another one done. So that's in there. So normally I would poach this, but to save a bit of time, I'm going to just um, fry it in a bit of butter. Now, but the one, one good thing about poaching is it makes it nice and delicate, but the only trouble is then it ends up far too wet. So I'm going to quickly season these. Actually, where well, I've got the smoked fish, actually, I'm not going to put any much salt in it because the smoked fish is a little bit salty. You can dry these off a bit. I'm going to wash my hands here. And I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper on them, the white fish. And you can dry them. If you're having fish, sometimes they cook, they don't spit so much in the pan. You can just dab them off so they're nice and dry. That's a one known thing to do. But you don't have to do that, but sometimes that's good for certain things. Let's put that in the bin. So I'm going to put a little bit of salt just on the white fish. The, the mashed potato is quite tasteless, so it definitely needs them. So if you don't mind the black bits in it, you can put some black pepper on it. Or you can put a little bit of white pepper on it if you don't want the black bits. So I'm melting the butter, and the butter would go when we go in mashed potato, and I won't put any in it because I'm going to cook it in there. So these would keep them drier. Um, now, otherwise they go quite soggy otherwise. So with mashed potato, one thing you can do, if you want it dry, is that when they're cooked, once you've drained them, you can put them back in the pan. That's the other secret. So I'm going to wash this knife, because I'm going to use this knife again in a minute. Now in there, you can put fresh parsley, get a different chopping board, you can get fresh parsley, you can get onion. So I might put a little bit of red onion in, and I'm going to fry that in with the fish. So cut the top off, and the bottom off. Normally do this with a smaller knife, isn't it? So once it's cooked, I'm going to do red onion, onion get a little bit. We don't have to put this in. Other people put gherkins in it, um, capers, ch chopped fresh parsley is quite good. Um, cut the onion in half. So I'm going to do this quite fine, only half an onion. 90% of the way through. Spin it round. The other half, and I'm going to put some in the house and put them in to stir-fry them together. So a little bit chopped it up. You've got to put garlic in. I'm not going to put garlic in, that's more for the stir-fry, that's what the garlic is So I'm going to put this in with the fish in there as well. Fish doesn't take too long, and it will carry on cooking when I do the other job. So I'll just chop this up while I've got the chopping board. That's going to go in the stir-fry later. So, I've got a fish like this to turn it over. I've also got some breadcrumbs which I've made. These are going through like a food processor machine, fresh breadcrumbs, so you can get dry ones, but fresh ones work out cheaper and better. I've got some flour, and I'm going to crack these two eggs, because I'm going to egg wash them on the So I'll probably need two. One might be pushing it, so I'm going to do two. I'll in there. You could actually cook this fish if you were making fish pie, because it'll give it some flavour. Um, but I won't today, but normally you can cook the skin and then if you're poaching it. Now with this one here, I'm just going to get a fork and whisk it up. You can if you think two is not quite enough, just put maybe a tiny bit of water or milk in it. Now of course, oh, a bit of onion skin there. So two should be enough, might be pushing it. I can always crack another egg, I've got plenty of eggs, but it's a short of eggs, you can water it down a bit. So whisk the two eggs up. I've also got some cheese and ham here, there to go with cheese and chips, so there to go in the potato skin. So I'll finish with that for the minute. Oh, but I might make some fish cakes on there when they come out. So I've got a bowl ready here. I'm going to scoop the potato out. So I'll cut them all in half actually on here. 
And then I'm, uh, so one advantage of this is it makes it nice and dry. The potato will be dry. Um, if there's any back bits, just cut them out. A couple of little back bits here. If you notice if you're peeling them, you can see them. Fill the tablespoon with the third spoon. Uh, these are definitely done on one side. This is a big frame here, so I'm going to lower it down. It is quite ferocious. So I'm going to lower that down. They won't take long to cook. By the time I've done this, they might cook. So now I'll get the mashed potato. Now I would normally put fresh parsley in here. Now I've got some in my garden, so I'm going to run out in a minute, 20 seconds, and I'm going to go and get some. So don't throw these potato skins away. I wouldn't have, um, I love these potato skins, so especially if they've been cooked in the oven. If they've been cooked in the microwave, I'm not so keen on them. Um, so I'm going to put these. These are nice with like, if you had a deep fryer, you can chop any little bad brown bits off. There's probably little bad bits in here, so let's cut them off. Reproduce type things. But I'm going to definitely use the skin. So the skins are going to go back in the oven. Maybe not all today, but I'm going to have at least uh, two of them. I buy actually I've got eight and no I'm there with that over eight here. I won't need all eight. But I'm going to do five of today. Uh, if you're a deep fryer in this, you need some sour cream, bacon, cheese, loads of things. I haven't got much cheese. Uh, but there's a little bit of cheese and bacon. So I'm going to use five of these. And there's all the mashed potato. You can either use a masher or you can do it with a fork. So I'll put it in like a flat bottom one. It'll be, it's okay to be a little bit chunky. So that fish is going to be nicely here. Don't want too much colour on it. Otherwise, it'll make the fish look. Then put the butter in it. So I'll put it on quite low now just to finish it off. It will carry on cooking. So you don't have to be fully cooked because I'm going to cook it. So I'm going to get another tray out here. I've already got some things cooking in there, but another thing here is going to be for my potato skins. So the first thing is to get a bit of paper, so it's just sticking to the bottom, all the cheese will stick like mad. A bit more paper, so we get that very well. Hold it over and put the potatoes in. I'm going to do five for now. Two, three, four, five. Now I've got a little bit of chorizo in here, one bit in each, one, two. Now these, I've got these out actually because I had this for breakfast this morning. Uh, I might chop a bit up and put in one of the fish cakes just to show you. Then a little bit of this cheese, and cheese could go in the fish cakes, so I'm not going to point these now because I've only got this tiny bit left here without having to grate any more. So they can go in here. They're like a little snack with it. You could put onion in it as well. Oh, I've got some onion in it, so I might put a little bit of onion in this as well. So I'm going to nick a bit of the onion back, which I'll save for the stir fry. And then you've got something to go with it as well, like some potato skins with it, so that'd be good. And you don't waste any of the feelings. And potato skins have got good for fibre. So as we can see, spring onions would be good in this, anything like that. So I did say I was going to run, so I'm using them later, I'm not going to throw them away, but I'll probably have them tomorrow. So I'll move them to one side. So what I'm going to do now is simply run and get some parsley and I reckon I'll be back in less than 30 seconds. I've got some parsley and some thyme. So I'm going to wash this something with that. Normally okay. We give it a quick rinse and the thyme. This thyme is nice and green thyme. As you can see, nice and moist. So soft, soft thyme, sometimes it gets a bit dry. So I'm trying to need to take it off the stalk so we can. This one here, I quickly which is, I haven't got many stalks in. I'm going to chop a bit of this. So this is good for the, for the fish. You don't have to put it in, which gives it a bit more flavour. Well, that fish is nearly cooked. I'm going to turn it off in a minute. Let's have another quick go. That's uh, probably okay now. I'm going to turn it off. I'll show you that in a minute once I've chopped the parsley up. So I'm going to mash the potato. I'm not going to put any extra butter in it or milk because I don't want it too runny. Normally, you mash potato and want it light and fluffy, but you don't want it too wet today, otherwise, they don't mold and they fall apart. Um, a lot of chefs do all different things, put some dry bread, crumbs in it to thicken it up. 
uh, mashed potato powder. I've seen a lot before that works well as well. Only a tiny bit like a tablespoon can make the difference between it being mushy or not. So finish with that for a minute. Move that, mash the potato. So I've done four potatoes. Because once you mash them, as you can see, don't get too much fish out of them. Don't forget this is all fresh cooked now, so if it's left, we don't need all the fish cakes, that would be okay. And you can't make these, you probably normally make them the day, but you can't make them the day before. Wrap that up as you can. Um, if you want, you can use a ricer, and then obviously there won't be any lumps in it or so. I don't mind it a little bit. For this, I'm not piping it, so it's okay. So it's nice, it's pretty smooth. You can see it's all got some green in it. Um, it would have a lot more flavour. So now I've got quite a lot of fish here. As you can see, there's probably as much fish here as there is potatoes. To make it cheaper, you can either just use a lot less. This is all breaking up now, as you can see. I can go in here. Scrape it all out with a spatula to save wasting it and getting all that flavour of the fish off the bottom of the pan. So scraping that off well. Save wasting it. I can either use this one, I've already got one out with some oil in, but I could probably use that one again to um, fry them in later if you want to fry them in, in and then mash them up. Now this might be a bit hard to be careful here when I'm moulding these. Normally so I might make this and then just let it cool down for 20 minutes. But obviously where we're on here, we can't, so it's just going to stir it around. And as you can see, it's not too dry, and it'd be better if it's a little bit drier. And flour, I would normally put flour in it, because that might make it taste floury. So if you want the fish real small bits, you can mash it up first. Uh, and you can probably do, do this on a machine as well. So as you can see, even though I've got no liquid in there, obviously a bit of butter, and there's some water come out of the fish. So these are a bit softer than I would, so I can put a handful of these breadcrumbs in, dry it out a little bit, or oh, like I said, mashed potato powder will be a, like a good way of doing it, because the powder soaks up a lot of the water, and it goes to be dried straight away. So once you've done that, I'm going to start moulding them. Now this is a bit like burgers. Oh, you can put an egg yolk in them, actually. Um, and that would help, help them to bind together. I'm not going to do that, but you can do that. And like I said, you can put gherkins in them, capers in them. I've got some capers here and gherkins. I'm going to serve tartar sauce with it today, so I'm going to show you how to make that as well. So first thing first, I'm going to get this three in my family. So we need to make roughly six here, unless I want some left, obviously. So it's the other thing, think how many in your family, think for well, some people might eat more in your family than others. Uh, so you have to think how many you're going to make. So I'm going to make at least six, so we get to each, otherwise we'll be cutting them in half and they'll be arguing about it. So at least six equal lumps I want, if I get more, I get more. So these would be nicer and they'd be good fishy flavour. That's, that's four, five, six. So I'm gonna, I could make six, only make six. So we're only going to make, but then they might be too big for people. So I'm going to make it until we get a spare one. And then somebody can have an extra one if they want one, rather than some people not eat it. So I've got some flour. Yeah, so I might need a little bit more flour. So I've got some flour on my hands. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a chorizo one in a minute. So I'm going to put that on there to remind me, otherwise I forget, because that's where I thought I'd leave that there. Or I could just use it another day, but just to show you, because you can get um, cod and panna cotta, um, not cod and panna cotta, um, cod and pancetta ones are quite famous, and they've got like bacon in it. Obviously, panna cotta is a sweet, uh, thickened up with gelatin, cream, and strawberries or whatever it is with gelatin. So, try and make them roughly even, that one's slightly smaller. If you're worried about this, you could weigh them. A bit like, um, this reminds me of burgers, it's in a waist shape in them. So you can shape this with a pallet knife quite often with two pallet knives. I just do it with my hand, I make sure I've got more flour on here. Now if I left this for about five or ten or half an hour in the fridge, they would harden up and they'd be a lot easier to wet wash and break one. But I'm not going to do that now because you're waiting and we're all waiting for tea. So the next thing, these have got quite a lot of flour on already. So I'm just going to sprinkle these a bit more flour. Now the idea of flour it might look a, lot, a bit excessive flour. Um, the egg will only really stick to it if there's some flour on it. They don't stick quite so well. So I've finished with that plate. Oh no, I haven't because I'm going to make one more with pancetta. So it's this one here. Now I've got no pescatarians here or anything. so. They won't mind a bit of meat. 
a bit mint. So this one's going to be not pancetta. This is chorizo. I love chorizo. Got a great flavour. Um, and these would be good ones. So we're going to share this one. So we're going to have two each, and then we'll all share this one. And we'll see if my wife likes it. And look at this. I may try some of these again. I've got a whole stick of it in the fridge when I bought some the other day. And it won the lot. It was slightly cheaper buying it in a big stick, but not a lot. So I bought some sliced, and I bought some other stick stuff. So we can see which one. I was going to see which one tastes the best. But this was really good. Like I said, we had it for breakfast. We haven't got any eggs left. So I did that with cheese on toast and baked beans. It was good. They made, made the baked beans taste a lot better, a bit more exciting than they normally do. Move the bowl out of the way. As you can see, oh, maybe I'll make this one. I'll try and remember which one this is. So maybe I'll make this a bit of a different shape. So I'm going to make this one more like an oval type shape because otherwise when they're all in the pan, sometimes I have a habit of forgetting which one's which. So try and make them slightly different. When I made some sausage rolls the other day, and cheese and onion rolls, I made them different sizes. That's an easy one to do as well. So the next thing, egg on breadcrumbs. This is called panne. So hopefully I've got enough, otherwise I might need, I see only breadcrumbs. Oh, you don't actually have to. Um, so I'm gonna get the pan on, save myself a bit of time, because this isn't gonna take me long to do this. I've got a bit of oil in the pan. You can just put these straight in the oven, but with fresh breadcrumbs, I prefer to fry them first, they get a more golden brown colour. But you could just put them in the oven, maybe brush them with oil or just have them a bit healthy. So, this might take, I might have to, it might not be quite quick enough. I might have to turn it off. But. So these would be break, ah, so there's a good secret here. When you're doing this by yourself, I shouldn't get this hand wet. This hand, let's move these out of the way for the minute. This hand, we don't want wet. So this one's the dry one. And if you're doing two of you in a big catering kitchen, when I was in the Navy years ago, we used to have two people doing this normally. One would do the egg washing and then you can use both hands on it. So you have to be careful though. So what I might be better doing is egg washing them all. And just, uh, this is a little bit wet, even though I did them in the oven, the jacky potatoes. And like I said, it's not quite thick enough. I'll do a few, because I'm gonna get them in the, in the frying pan before it starts burning before it catches on fire, it should take a while. But obviously dry, that's one thing if you did this, but I'm trying to save time. And they're all waiting for their tea roll in the moment. So two eggs was enough, one egg wouldn't have been enough, right? And you don't have to, like I said, egg wash them all. You can just um, cook them like this, then have to have some egg wash. So do that one last, and I'm gonna try and keep that one a bit oval shape. So now, I don't want my hands too wet, so I'm going to quickly wash them and dry them. Then I'm not going to try them. I'm going to get them a bit wet, but right? because I've, there's only, I've really got, I have to pick them up somehow, unless I pick them up with a fish lace. So what I'm going to do, try and keep this hand a bit dry. And once you've moulded them, by the way, another quick trick is, you can just mould them so they're perfectly round again with the, so you can see they're pretty, I'm not going to think you can make them nice and round to make them fairly cold. So I just put that one straight in here because it stops heating up too much. That's cooking, that's good, that's good. This one here, a few on top. It depends how thick you like them. This is a good size, two of those I reckon will be two for the normal adult, depending on what you like. So I finished with the egg for the minute, so I'm just going to do the breadcrumbs. If I haven't got enough, maybe the last one, one of them. One of the ones for my tea, rather than get any more breadcrumbs that I'll make any more. I just had some left from before and I freeze them. I normally do the whole loaf. Really, that's it. So this is, so I'm going to do one without breadcrumbs on to show you. So that's had egg on it. You could just have a bit floured. Because I was going to egg wash and breadcrumb these ones. I didn't want this, the end one, not breadcrumbs. I wanted to egg wash the bread, if there's any left for it, but as you can see. Not. So it uses quite a few breadcrumbs up, as you can see here. So there's going to be two with no, let me see if I'm going to shape it a bit, push it down, it up, put it in, and I'll put this one back in the middle. So this one's the oval one, we're easy to be able to tell now, there's got no breadcrumbs on it, so I'll be able to see the pink bits for the drizzle. So I've finished with all this for a minute, I'll be a clean chopping board to make the tartar sauce. Move that to one side. So I'm going to show you the pan at the moment. I'm going to turn them over before they burn because I think one or two might be definitely 
Okay. Oh, perfect. It looks like a good colour. I'll just see any second. Oh, that one's nearly too dark. That one's not quite dark enough. The first one I put in. Uh, so they're all pretty good. My wife loads it up well done. So she liked them like that. She looks all the way dark for them. Not them so I'm going to bring the camera over so you can see. As you can see, they're cooking away nicely there. So I'll leave the fry pan there for the minute. We'll bring it back because I'm going to make the tartar sauce. So that will take probably a couple of minutes each side. So I'm going to lower it down a bit now because it's quite on quite high. So while I do that, I'll finish with all this. So you could use this bit of egg up as an omelette or something. I'm going to use another chopping board. But before I do that, I'm going to clean the side off. So, oh, I've got one more. Oh, I've got another fish cake in. If we've got, oh, that one. I'm going to chuck in as well because I think we'll eat two each. So we do need those ones. So the first things first, cloth. By the time I've worked this, I'll check them again. Uh, there's one I put in last. So if you've got a table scraper, you can put all this, scrape this into a bowl. You can test all rubbish. I'm going to store it in the rubbish bin. Go over and quickly check them so they don't burn them. The one in the middle now will be turned over, or oh, that's golden brown. There's one that's not really done one side. Oh, they're looking good now. Now, where the mashed potato was hot and the fish was hot, they won't need finishing in the oven. If you made these and put them in the fridge overnight, I would recommend you put them in the oven for a bit, or you can probe them to make sure that it's there with any fire. So either fry them a bit more, another way to chuck them in the oven, you can forget about them, that's always really good. So I've got two things in the oven actually, we've got corn jets in the garden. So I've just put a few of them in the oven, or one large one. I'll show you how big they're, they're funny looking corn jets, they're real fat ones, I don't know why they go like that, you don't normally buy them in the shop like that, but they taste like corn jets rather than the marrow, even though they've gone quite big. So then I need to dry the table before I carry on. So we might have to, I've got quite a big ring on the cooker. I might have to lower it down. So this now, the one that I put in last, is turning over. I'm going to have to remember which one that is. Because that's the only one that's not in the So, so what we're going to do now is, oh, I'm going to show you if we're going to take them up. Yeah. Oh, and we can have these with it as well. So I can put these in the oven. Um, you won't need so many of these now because those fish cakes are quite big so I'm only going to do one each actually so I'm going to leave them for now put them in the oven, the oven's on I put some rhubarb in there move that to one side and I've got some sort of here uh, they're more or less done here but I'll just leave them in the oven turn the oven up a little bit because they're, they're done, they're just jacket potatoes but then the cheese will melt and they'll be nice and hot. Normally they're good deep fried, but it's not very happy. So the next thing I'm going to do is the tartar sauce. Last job, then we're going to serve up. So I could, oh, I'll tell you what I do quite like. Well, my wife wants some stir fry with it. So these are nearly So I'm turning them off to the side, put the big heat on. So I'm going to use the same fishy type pan for the veg stir fry. is nearly done so I'm going to put it on low. The rest there for take a couple of minutes. Uh, peas would go well with a fish cake. Uh, I quite like mushy peas either. You can buy the mushy peas which are from Marapat peas but I just got it quite, quite like um, the normal garden peas mashed up with a bit of mint. I've got some mint in the garden. So we have chopped the gherkins up. So tartar sauce. You can make the mayonnaise, obviously. But I've just got two gherkins, slice them thinly. And you can garnish it, by the way, this, um, in restaurants. They might garnish it with like a fan gherkin. Maybe I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm going to use two whole gherkins. Fine, chopped up reasonably fine. Slice them thinly. Spoon them down the other way. Top them up. 
to two. One will be quite enough, two is going to be quite a lot, but we all quite like plant down sauce, so they made down sauce. Got some mayonnaise to go with it. A bit of the light stuff, and what you like. Not quite so creamy. So these are capers, these are all our pickled flowers. These are the two main things that go in past. Now some people put dill in it and parsley, or some other stuff, whatever you like. With. So I'm going to get a bowl. Uh, I'm going to make about, oh, we'll have about a dessert spoon each of this. That one's nearly done, so I reckon these look pretty good, as you can see, they're not all done, but most of them are done. Uh, one or two are a bit anemic, so I'll just make sure they're done, but I might take some of the other ones out. So just going to turn them all over, see if they're done on the other side, which they are. So we have two on this one. These I'm going to leave for another side. Two, uh, one to two, and they're not going to take long. So I'm going to put them back on, make sure that's two. Oh, that one, that one looks a nice colour on that one. And if you like them, how well done, golden you like them. These ones are a little bit too light, I think. Oh no, that one looks pretty good. So as you can see, they're there, just put the last two. Put the, put the pan back on, but not too high, because they're nearly done. It would be okay, but I like them with a little bit more colour on than that. So, mayonnaise. Tartar. I'm going to use about a tablespoon each. So, one, two, three. Mayonnaise. Just about a tablespoon. Quite often we have coleslaw. And we've got the stir fry today. And we got some vegetables left in yesterday. And we've got these four jets as well. So, tartar sauce. Here we go. Nice and easy. Look how easy that was. So, we've got some tartar sauce here. Um, and you can put some dill and fresh parsley in it. So a bit of dill on the bit of tartar on the plate. Uh, we could do lemon with it. Uh, my wife's not over keen on lemon, so let me just see. squeeze in the fridge here. Get a lemon out. Oh, you can put lemon juice in the tartar. Uh, some salad. My wife quite likes salad, so she has stir fry today, so you have salad with it. Uh, wedges, so here's the lemon. You can either do slices, like so, or I can do more of a wedge type thing. It's a bit short for a wedge now. Uh, and you can have, if you're going to uh, like squirt it, and you can cut the white bit out, like so, so you can squirt it. Some people put a little, few little zigzags in here to make a little bit of a pattern as well. And it makes it easier to do it. So we've got a little bit of lemon on there. And we can have a slice of lemon, or we can have two slices of lemon, or lemon on each one. Look, I could have saved a bit of parsley for the top. Oh, I did say, I would um, pan a gherkin, I'm going to show you that as well. Uh, with this stir fry, give it a bit of flavour. I've got a bit of sweet sauce in it. So this says do a gherkin, so uh, I don't know if what my wife won't be over keen on the gherkin. But I like them, my son quite likes them, so I'm going to do one for me in here. Oh, they're, they're quite big, so maybe I'll, you know, put one more in. So I quite like them, actually. So, put the lemon on there for a minute. Uh, so, fanning it. So, if they're nice and straight, it's going to be a lot easier, by the way. So, just slice it down as many times as you can. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one here, one, two, three, one. There's a few more slices. I'm fanning it out, it's quite a large gherkin, but I quite like them. So I'm gonna have this one on this big plate here. There's one for my son. Uh, veg stir fry nearly done, just put a bit suey in it. Suey in it. So, oh, one thing I have got, I've got some marinated ginger in the fridge, which I've finished with. The dummies, but they're looking good now. They're perfect, those ones. So turn those ones off. And I'm going to might cut the one up to show you. Um, I was going to get something out of the fridge. Oh, I've got a little bit of ginger. So this is some pickled ginger, like a sushi the other day. So that's going to be, um, give it a, just a little bit of flavor to save wasting it. And you can put things in like sherry and some other stuff. Uh, a little bit of 
sesame sauce. I've got this little Japanese toast to use here, so I'll use some of that, a little bit of that, about a tablespoon of that. So, we'll put a bit of fish stir fry on each one, and then we're ready. Oh, and I've got the cool jets, if you remember, in here, and I've nearly forgot the potatoes. We've got one potato, one potato each, one potato each on there. Bit of stir fry. Some things up here, it's not a very big plate here. A little bit of stir fry each. And there we go. And I'll quickly show you the chorizo one. So the chorizo one is here. So as you can see, it's a slightly different shape I've made it. So um, and I'll quickly really show you what it's like in the middle. I want to cut this one into thirds because we can get a taste of it and see what everybody sees if they like them or not. So, as you can see, I'll show you on the camera. I've plugged it on the same board as a gherkin, that'd be fine because be, that's okay. So, as we can see on the camera, we've got some the chorizo one. We'll see, I'll let you know which ones they like when I put it on my YouTube channel. And just going to show you the last finished results. And then we have the fish cakes uh, with some stir fry. And I've also got some courgettes, they're just out the garden. My son doesn't like them, but I do. I'll quickly show you them, and that's the last thing, I think. So, give them a bit of flavour. I'm going to put a bit of oil on them, salt and pepper. Uh, I quite like them with garlic or tomato. Yesterday I did them with tomatoes, so today I've done them like that. Thank you.